I was searching my Evernote for who requested Nothing Man, and sometimes I write little notes to myself to find in the future, and it was uh, the one I came across was sample some cats and pitch correct them and do a cat only <laughs> cover of Nothing Man. Raise your hand if you'd like to hear that one. Anyways, this. This is the song that uh, Ever First got me by the boo-boo, and well, here we are now, right? And this is for Ian Fenton and Carlos Zapata. Of course, I have another Nothing Man video up, but that's my own special way I sort of did, and to be totally honest, when I made that video, I thought that's how you played Nothing Man. But to figure out a song that Stone Gossard wrote, uh, sometimes you gotta stop thinking like a normal person and think like Stone Gossard. So the tuning, first of all, regular, 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 regular. You're gonna tune your B string up one half step to C. I put a mild analog chorus on the guitar to try to capture the Nothing Man essence. And you're gonna tune this E string down four steps to the exact same C. And then you put your capo on the fifth fret, and when you make a, a C chord but minus that pointer finger, you have way too many Fs going on because those these two strings are both F now with the capo and those are going to remain open the whole time and that gives it that open ringy outy nothing man vibe which you know anyways we don't have to talk about that let's go all right nothing man for real for really real this is it this is yeah honor to the song I just love this song okay so like I said make a C shape but we're going to remove your your pointer finger and you're going to strum one, two, three, four, five, six on C before you start the next measure, which starts on C. So C, we're gonna do A minor, but remember, we're not touching this B string the whole time, so our A minor is uh, diluted down to just the second fret of the D and the G strings. G, but only the two bass notes from the G. Use whatever the heck fingers you want. Back to A minor. This is where, well, this is this is strange to me. It's it's an F power chord, and I was watching Stone do it in a couple of videos, and he was only using two fingers, which also leaves that D string open, which shouldn't be there, but listen to it. And if you listen to the, the live at Lollapalooza and listen to the Bridge School one from, I don't know, some time ago, um, th that open D string is just blaring in your face. If you listen for it, it is absolutely 100% definitely there. So that's it, a two finger power chord, so to speak. There's other, you know, notes, so it's not really a power chord. For that F, here we go. C, four, five, six, C, A minor, G, A minor, F, once divided. So the last six beats of the verse are that F thing that shouldn't work but does. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're into the pre-chorus, which is three beats of this. One, two, three, one, two, three, plus three beats of the fifth fret relative to the capo of our same uh, two-finger power chord with that open D ringing out thought process. So one, two, three, one, two, three, back to one for six beats. Then one, Three, one, one, and it's like it's a low. It's like an E minor relative to the capo. There's there's three options here. I want you to consider, and I don't know which one's right. But if you like uh, the tableau of this two finger power chord thing going on, then we'd have open two, open, 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 open for that chord. Or it could be just a regular E minor. These are three different ways of getting much the same thing done, so whichever one you find most uh, satisfying is the one you should do. Or the third option is play your C shape, but include your low E string, which makes it a C with an E in the bass. So here's what all three of those sound like. The two finger power chord one. The E minor one. Almost the same, right? The C with an E in the bass one almost cannot tell a difference, but I like this one, even though I don't think it's right. Because you get that change going in it. You 
also get that with the E minor, but that has the C going down to B, which it very, you know, probably does. But I also like the logic of the two finger power chord one. So, all right, anyways, here's that whole part. We'll start on the six beats of F. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. Five relative capo back to one. on the C, but I'm going to take a breath. The chorus is the easiest part. C, the F that shouldn't work but does, and the G that is the same shape, two frets higher. Awesome. I just love that D string ringing out. That one little thing really just makes it for me. Anyways, now we know it's there. I just did this by accident. Look how bad it sounds now if you play a C chord with that pointer finger. It's so beautiful. All right, so we're coming out of the second chorus going into the bridge. Isn't it something? Nothing bad. We're going up to five. Now, five. Oh. One, three. The opposite. Sun, up to three. Yeah, into the sun, down to the low E one. Burn, up to the third fret, going into the last chorus. Now, I just gave that Lollapalooza one a really, really good listen, and I believe the final answer is that when you go down to E, it's just one finger, so we still have that open D string thing going on. That is my official guess. All right, so that whole part. Something, nothing, man. Fifth fret. One, three, one, five. guys and uh, did I say who did I even say who requested that oh my goodness gracious well I'm gonna have to go back to the beginning and do that in case I did not but yeah that was great fun and now we've done nothing man for real thanks so much for being here I'll see you next time with more stuff goodbye oh we forgot the most important part of the song before you start you go <laughs> goodbye